Zechariah. Um, we're still in the book of Zechariah, chapter 10. We're, we're going to read 1 through 12. Amen. Zechariah is where we were, right? Okay. Y'all ready to go? Amen. Let's stand on our feet. I need someone to read for me. First lady, will you get somebody to read for me this morning? Just assign somebody. Make sure they can read, though. I'm just saying, not everybody has... Okay. Well, she can read a little bit. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> Zechariah chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. Go ahead. Message, yes. Zechariah 10, 1 through 12. Pray to God for rain. It's time for the spring rain. To God, the rainmaker, spring thunderstorm maker, maker of grain and barley, store bought gods babble gibberish, religious experts spout rubbish. They pontificate hot air. Their prescriptions are nothing but smoke. And so the people wander like lost sheep, poor lost sheep without a shepherd. I'm furious with the so-called shepherds. They're worse than billy goats, and I'll treat them like goats. God of the angel armies will step in and take care of his flock, the people of Judah. He'll revive their spirits. Make them proud to be on God's side. God will use them in his work of rebuilding. Use them as foundations and pillars. Use them as tools and instruments. Use them to oversee his work. They'll be a workforce to be proud of, working as one. Their heads held high, striding through swamps and mud, courageous and vigorous because God is with them, undeterred by the world's thugs. I'll put muscle in the people of Judah. I'll save the people of Joseph. I, Joseph, I know their pain and will make them good as new. They'll get a fresh start as if nothing ever happened. And why? Because I am their very own God. I'll do what needs to be done for them. The people of Ephraim will be famous. Their lives brimming with joy. Their children will get on in on it too. Oh, let them feel blessed yes, by God. God. I'll whistle and they'll all come running. Oh my God. I've set them free. Oh, how they'll flourish. Even though I scattered them to the far corners of the earth, they'll remember me in the faraway places. Yes. They'll keep the story alive in their children, and they will come back. I'll bring them back from the Egyptian west and round them up from the Assyrian east. I'll bring them back to sweet Gilead, back to leafy Lebanon. Mm. Every square foot of land will be marked by homecoming. Yes. They'll sail through troubled seas. Come on. Brush aside ocean waves. Yes, yes. Roaring rivers will turn to a trickle. My God. Gaudy Assyria will be stripped bare. Bully Egypt exposed as a fraud. But, but my, my people, people. Say it one more but time. But my people. Oh, I'll make them strong. God strong. And they'll live my way. God says so. <laughs> Why does that last statement, all I hear, it is finished. Yeah. Plain and simple. Stamp it. Father God, we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, can, can I share something with you, people of God? I don't know how many of you actually are reading this. If you're actually hearing this, I'm, I want to show you how awesome God is. After studying this, I, I, I've been here for over a month now, about a month, right? Over a month on the rebuilding process. Studied it, had everything together, where I'm going, notes, all of this. Everything was fine. I, I came home, I went home about ooh, late. I ain't going to say what time. I don't want to do anything I say can and will be held against me in a court of Denise. 
So I came home late, and, and, and I always I have this thing now when I come, come home, I, I'm out in the garage for a while, and I'll go stand out, and I'll just look up at the sky, and I'll glorify God for simple things, for the stars, just, just for his awesome. Have, have, you, have you, when was the last time that you were up at 4, 35 o'clock in the morning outside, and you can hear the, the rooster crow? My God. That's a beautiful sound. And, and it's a beautiful sound to me because the first thing this rooster does is glorify God in the morning. See, you think cockadoodle do is about you. Cockadoodle do ain't about you. It ain't about waking you up. It, it's about glorifying God. And, 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 and I, I hear the rooster, a cockadoodle do. And then he'll get quiet, and all of a sudden I hear, <laughs> I hear the birds chirping. Then all of a sudden I hear <laughs> the crickets rubbing their legs together. I said, my God, if they got enough sense to glorify you, let me step out of the garage and let me glory. Oh. See, you got to understand, I will not let a rock cry out. Jesus. What was I talking about? I came home late. Watch this. And, 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 and I set my phone on, on the car, and, and, and I turned it on so that, so that the, uh, the Audible Bible would play. And, and, and watch this. I'm, I'm standing outside. I'm in the garage now. Jesus. Hold on one sec. I just want to share with y'all. This is, this is kind of how God deals with me sometimes. Y'all bear with me, Facebook. I'm looking for my volume button. I'm standing out in the garage, and I decide to... Chapter 10, God's work of rebuilding. Pray to God for rain. It's time for the spring rain. And I'm standing in the garage, and it, it's pouring down outside. Yeah. And, and, and I said, hold on, God. It is spring, and he said, it is raining. But, 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 but watch this. This is God showing me, because I'm ready to get off of this, and God was just showing me, you're on time. If you stop, if you move too quick, and see, the rain was falling, and all of a sudden, I played this, and it was God confirming, stay right where you are. Stay right where you are. And, and I'm listening to the word. I'm listening to the word be read to me, Mom. Faith cometh by hearing. And I'm listening to the word be read. God. Let's go into it. I'm listening to the word be read. And, and I got to a part, and God asked me, he said, who am I talking to here? And I said, you, you, you're talking to the Hebrew children after they came out of captivity. This is what he told me, Elder. He said, I'm the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He said, my word is perpetual. He said, what I spoke to the Hebrew children in this text is the same thing that I spoke to Israel when they were coming out. It's the same thing that I spoke, I'm speaking to you now watch this. He said, I'm speaking to you now, but I'm speaking to your children for tomorrow. Watch this. Let, let's go into the word. Let's go into the word. Jesus, let's go into the word. Um, where am I at here, Jesus? I got so excited about the word last night. Now we've already talked about the God of the angel armies. I don't want to go too far back. Um, he talked about us being a workforce to be proud of, working as one, our heads held high, uh, we talked about Ephraim being blessed, receiving the double portion. This is where I want to go at today. This is where I want to go. I, I want to pick up where did we left, leave off? I got so many notes here. Bear with me here. The people of Ephraim, Ephraim will be famous, their lives brimming with joy. We covered that. Their children will get in on it too. Oh, let them feel blessed by God. I whistle 
and they'll come running. They'll all come running. I've set them free. Oh, how they'll flourish. Even though I scattered them to the four corners of the earth, they'll remember me in far away places. They'll keep the story. I want y'all to catch where I'm going at with this. Because I remember being so strung out. My mind wasn't even in its right place. I was in a far away place. Do you get what I'm saying? In some kind of way, he brought me back to the foundation. Y'all got to understand, at 13 years old, I told my mama, my mama I didn't want to go to church anymore. And my mama stopped making me go to church at 13 years old. So from 13 till 24, 25, I got 12 years of good sinning in. Oh, come on. Did, did, did y'all get some good sinning in or y'all just got some regular sinning in? Mom, bro, I got some good sinning in. But, but when it was time to come back, when the whistle, when the whistle was blown. See, now, now I want y'all to catch this. When he, when he blew the whistle and I came back, I had a foundation to come back to, my God. Because, see, those years up to 13, God was laying a foundation with Christ being the chief. Court. And this is not me being saved. Well, I wasn't saved. But I had a foundation to come back to. And as long as you have a foundation, and I'm talking to the parents right now. Catch this. As long as your child has a foundation to come back to, he's able to rebuild. Oh, my God, my God. See, we didn't always have it all together. And some of us tore down our playhouses. But God allowed the foundation. How many of you grew up in church and you went and you did your thing? But some kind of way God brought you right back. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning, just like he brought you right back, he's going to bring your children right back. My God. He said, stop worrying about them. He said, I blew the whistle and you came. He is only a matter of time before I blow it and they come. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Go ahead and sit down. Go ahead and sit down. Jesus. Jesus. He said, don't give up on them just yet. It may look like they lost. They so far away, they, it don't even look like they're in their right mind. Oh, my God, my God, my God. He said it may not even look like they're in their right mind. He said, but that's all right. That's all right, my God, my God. He said, that's all right. Just look at somebody next to you and tell them, it's all right. He said it may look like they're out of their mind. They're so far gone, and it's like, God, are they ever, ever going to come back? Are they ever going to make it back? God, I've been praying for him. I've been laying on my face for her. God, is my labor of love in vain. He said, no. He said, I just hadn't blown the whistle for him yet. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Jesus. I promise you this message is for somebody this morning. Because you think that there are lost cause. But I'm here to tell you, God has a way of lassoing you and bringing you back. I guarantee you my mama never thought I would be a preacher. My mama expected me to be dead or in prison. My God. Oh, but look at me now. I'm not perfect, but I'm saved. I'm not perfect, but I'm delivered. I'm not perfect, but I'm sold out. My God, just look at somebody and say, won't he do it? If he did it for pastor, he'll do it for my baby. If he brought him back, there's hope that he'll bring my baby back. Oh, my God. He said, I'll whistle. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, my God. I think Mom Brown, I got excited about three, four times last night on this text. Because, see, I, I started seeing faces of young people coming back to God. But I also started seeing grown folks. And I started seeing the broken little boy in them. And I started seeing the damaged little girl. And God said, when I blow the whistle, it don't matter what age they are, they're coming back. Jesus, they're coming back. It don't matter if you're 13 or you're 30, you're coming back. Jesus, 
Let me get to my notes. Hold on. We're getting there, people of God. I'm, I'm going to get started. I'm going to get started. I'm just a little excited because I know that some of you that you are about to lose hope on your children and God said, don't give up. He said, I didn't give up on you and you were worse than them. My God, if I saved you, if I delivered you, watch this, watch this, watch this. And I want to prove that God's word is perpetual. I want to prove to you that God is speaking this word right here and now. Watch this. Watch this. He told them, where, where, oh, Jesus, I'm flipping through 12 screens. He said, I'll wilt them, they'll all come running. I've set them free. Oh, how they will, how they'll flourish. Even though I scattered them to the four corners of the earth. Even though I scattered them to the four corners. Even though I scattered them. My God, do you get what he's saying? See, you wanted to keep them in the house. God said, I got to send them out. They might have to go through some foreign territories. They might have to fall and bump their head. They may have to eat slop with the hogs. But I'm going to bring them back home. Oh, my God, my God. I remember when I told my mom I gave my life to Christ. You would have thought she had one publisher's clearinghouse. Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to say that again. When I told my mom I had given my life to Christ. You would have thought she had one publisher's clearing house. I'm not talking about the, the, the one with, uh, what's, what, what, what's the black guy name that, that does publisher's clearing house? No, the comedy guy. Isn't it the comedy? No, the other guy. Whose line is this? What's his name? Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady. That's who does publisher's I'm not talking about that little $5,000 a week of check. I'm talking about Ed McMahon check. The big check. You would have thought Bulo had won a big check. But she was so, she was so grateful that what she thought was going to happen to me didn't happen to me. My God. Just look at somebody and say, there's hope. Just don't give up. Okay, okay, where are we at? Where are we at? He said, even though I scattered them to the four corners of the earth. Watch this. He said, even though I scattered them to the four corners of the earth, even though I let them go and do their own thing, they'll remember me. Jesus. He said, they'll remember me. They'll remember me. Mom, I was, I think I was 17, 18 years old. And I shared the story with y'all, how the, how, how, how the dude messed me out of some money and I went to his house to kill him. And when my cousin push me in the back of the car. Now I'm 17. This is between the 13 and 20 something that I'm a sinner. A rank sinner. A good sinner. But Mother Callum, when he pushed me in the seat and we're driving off and he, he was telling me, I think it was Michael, Michael was telling me, and he said, I'm not going to let you do this. And I didn't get it at the time. I just thought he meant I'm not going to let you I'm not going to let you do this. Apparently, he saw something in my future that I wasn't seeing. Has anybody ever seen something in you that you don't see? My God, my God. Okay. Okay. Jesus. He said, they'll remember me in faraway places. Okay, this is where, I, where, where we're starting off. Jesus. He said, they'll keep me alive in their choice. And they will come back. My God. He said they will. They'll keep me, they'll keep the story alive in their children. My daughter asked me the other day. I'm trying to remember how she, quit, how she posed the question. But she asked me, basically, how do I know that what I believe is real? How, how, Dad, how do you know that this church thing is real? I said, I, I, I know that God is real because I prayed for a child and he gave me you. I said, I don't understand how the blessing wants to overlook the blesser. 
I said, if anybody should believe in God, it should be you. Because you're my blessing that came from my blesser. How can... She said, how, how, how do you know that, that this church thing is real? I said, I went to the potter's house for a six o'clock service. And I went on the altar. And as I'm standing there, a fire engulfed me. I said, I'm standing there with my eyes closed. And I can feel a fire en engulfing me. My eyes are closed, but I can see the flames. I said, when I walked off the altar, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. I was speaking in tongues. She said, how do you know that this church thing is real? I said, because I've gotten myself into too many situations that only God can keep. She said, how do you know? That this church thing is real. I said, because I laid in the top bunk of a prison cell. And I said, God, have you left me? Have you forsaken me? And he told me to look at the windowsill. And there were drops of blood on the windowsill. I said, this is how I know that this church thing is real. I'm not an idiot. I'm not gullible. I've been around. You can't just trick me with anything. You can't just sell me swampland in Egypt. Do you get what I'm saying? So I didn't buy into something because I'm foolish. I bought into it because I needed it. I bought into it because I knew what I was capable of. So you got to understand, you see the sweet little outer appearance, but you don't understand. You don't know the thoughts that go through people's minds. You wake up and look over and your husband sitting up in the bed. You don't know what's... Jesus... Jesus, I often wonder, how can somebody do diabolical things? And God said, if I wouldn't have came into your life, you would know how. How do somebody kill the whole, everybody in their household, the whole family? He said, when I'm not around, they do anything. He said, they'll keep the story alive in their children, and they will come back. Pour a foundation in your children, people. Give them something to come back to. We're talking about rebuilding. No matter how much damage is done, they can always rebuild if there's a foundation. But if you don't give them anything to build on, if they try to come back, they'll slip in the sand. They'll sink in the mud. Are you getting what I'm saying? In other words, your life is the pattern that they're looking at, people of God. He said, I'll bring them back. This is the part that got me, Mom Brown. He said, I'll bring them back from, from the Egyptian west. I'll round them up from the Syrian east. Now, I want you to understand what Egypt represents. Egypt represents captivity, bondage, sin. Now, now what did he say? What, what did he say? He said, I'll bring them back. From the Egyptian West. He said from the thing that is holding them in bondage. He said you think your child is not going to make it out. But the same word that delivered the Hebrews. The same word that delivered Egypt. The same word that brought you out. It's the same word. Somebody just jumped to their feet and said there's power in the word. Oh my God have you forgotten how powerful the word of God is. Oh Jesus. See, it's the word that delivered me. It's the word that saved me. It's the word that healed me. My God, just tell somebody the word. He said, I'll bring them from the Egyptian West. That thing that is holding them captive. That thing that has them in bondage. That thing that has them enslaved. He said, I'm bringing them out. He said, but on top of that, he said, I'll round them up from the Syrian West. If anybody knows anything about the Syrians, they were known for war. How many, how many of you ever, ever watch uh, uh, The Scorpion King? You, uh, uh, part two, the one with uh, The Rock. Remember what his nationality was? He was an Acadian. Same thing as an Assyrian. They were trained warriors. 
if you know anything about history, if you go back into the Christian wars, it was a Syria that the Christians were fighting against. So in other words, I'm going to bring them from a place of war. I'm going to bring them from a place of uneasiness. Oh, my God, are you getting what I'm saying? Because some of y'all children are going through hell in their minds. They're going through hell in their bodies. They're going through hell. And God said, I'm about to bring them out of a place where they've been going through hell. Jesus. Y'all going to get this in a minute. Now understand something. If he brings you from somewhere, he's got to take you to somewhere. <laughs> Woo, no matter how far your children go, they have a foundation to return to and a support system. My God, look at this. Look at this. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring them from, from bondage Egypt in the West. He said, I'm going to deliver them from the uneasy war of the Syrian East. He said, I'm going to bring them back to sweet Gilead. Oh, my God, my God. I don't think y'all read y'all Bibles. Do y'all know what Gilead was known for? Do y'all know what Gilead was? I don't, think, I don't think they know. I don't think they know. It's either they don't know or their kids ain't lost. See, see, we, we, oh, Jesus. He says, sweet Gilead. See, Gilead is, is the place where the healing bomb. He said, I'm going to bring them back into a place of healing, a place of restoration, a place of rebuilding. I, 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 can, can I tell you something? I told First Lady at what, what time? Three o'clock this morning. I said, this message is for fam. Don't give up, woman of God. He coming back. He coming back. Y'all put too much of a foundation in him. He got to come back. See, he may be, he may be out there, Lady Porter, but he's no further than we've been. Oh, my God. Call him back right now. DJ, we call you. Oh, my God. Put your child's name in that place. Put your grandchild in. We call you back. In the name of Jesus, my God, my God, call back your prodigal son. Call back your prodigal daughter. Call him the sweet Gilead, a place of healing. My God, my God, watch this. He, he said, he said I'll, I'll, I'll bring them back to sweet Gilead. No matter how the world has damaged them, no matter how broken they are, I'm bringing them back to a place of healing. Oh, my God, my God, oh, Jesus. He said, I'm going to deliver them. I'm going to deliver them from the bondage that's holding them. He said, I'm going to give them peace. He said, I'm going to heal every broken place in there. Oh, my God, my God, my God. He said, back to leafy Lebanon. No, 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 no. You got to understand. You got to understand why he said leafy Lebanon. Now, 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 I was doing some research about Lebanon, and Lebanon has, has, has two great mountains. And, and, and they said that it's, it, because of the mountains, the elevation of the mountains, that there's always snow on the mountains. And when you look at it, it looks so beautiful. Now, now watch this. When, when, when Beersheba comes to meet Solomon, and she brings a whole parade of people with her, because she heard about Solomon's godly wisdom. And, and, and not only does she bring people with her, she brings spices and she brings gifts to the king. And one of the things that she brought a, 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 a truckload of, and I say truckload, but they didn't have trucks. Y'all catch what I'm saying, right? But, but what she brought was cedars from Lebanon. Do, do, you, do you remember when Solomon builds the temple? Uh, or maybe it was David when David builds the house. He, he, he has the, the, the cedar. My God. You have to understand, the, 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 the timber that came out of Lebanon, be, because of the environment, it was such a strong, it was precious. It was exp you, you understand what I'm saying? He, he, he said, I'll bring them back to leafy Lebanon. I'll bring them back to a place of prosperity. Ooh. Oh my God. He said, I'll bring them back to a place that looks so good they'll forget about what they went through. Well, Pastor, how do you know he said all that? Because he said it for me and he did it. Remember, I said it's perpetual. His work. Can, can, can y'all grasp this? I, I want y'all to imagine something. Close your eyes for one second. 
And I want you to imagine God sitting on a throne. And I know you have to imagine a, a, a body, a person, because that's where our minds go. Imagine God sitting on the throne, and he's looking down at you right now. Now, shift your mind and imagine God sitting on the throne looking at you when you were 13 years old. Now, imagine God sitting on the throne looking at you at 75 years old. Now, imagine God sitting on the throne looking at you then, looking at you now, and looking at you... Oh, my God. You got to remember with God, the beginning is the end, and the end is the beginning. Jesus. He's Alpha. Jesus. My God. And, and I understand as parents, we get to the place where it's, I didn't had enough. And, and you want to cut them off. But your heart won't, won't let you cut them off. And God wanted me to encourage you. Because part of the building process ain't just you. It's them. Because he's got to build them for the next generation. See, you got to understand he was preparing us back then and now he's preparing them. Well, Pastor, how do you say he's preparing them and my child is out here doing the fool? They're getting life experience. Trust me, when the prodigal son came back to his father, he had a whole bunch of sense. He had learned some stuff. Mother Brenda, he had learned some things. See, you don't sit there and eat slop with the hogs. Somewhere in eating that husk. A light bulb went off in his head. That light bulb went off for you too. Jesus. In the midst of it. Light bulb went off. I got a home to go to. I got a foundation that I can rebuild on. I ain't got to be out here in the streets. I don't have to be living from here. As the old people say, from pillar to post. I got somewhere I can go. <sighs> Jesus. But here's the thing. It's in God's timing. Because watch this. Even though we may not like the process they're going through, if it were up to us, we would pull them out of that process prematurely and have to deal with a hard head all over again. But see, God will let you. God will let you marinate. Oh, my God. He'll, he'll let you sit there and just marinate. And, and see, here's the thing about marination. For different meats, it's a different marination time. My marination was six months. Somebody else's was 19 years. Do you get what I'm saying? But at the end of the process, oh, my God, my God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, at the end of the process. He said, I'll bring them back to sweet Gilead, back to leafy Lebanon. Let me say this, people of God, before I close out. When, when, when God's kind of curtailed this message and now he's talking about our children. And I said, okay, God, I, I, wonderful message. But how does that tie into reopening, rebuilding the church? I said, God, that don't really fit. He said, but I'm talking about rebuilding. The rebuilding is more than just the church. The rebuilding is the individual person that makes up the church. If, it, if the, each individual person will start a rebuilding process, the church will be rebuilt from the inside out. But my God. He said, all I'm doing is preparing the way for the next generation. See, that's why we can't give up on them. My daughter asked me, Dad, how do you know this church thing is real? I wanted to elbow her off the top rope. Girl, ever since you've known me, I've been saved. How you question my Christianity? 
But I understand, Mother Brenda, we live in a different world, a different time. Yeah. I grew up where, where they taught you Jesus, and that was just that. I didn't have a, I was, it, it was either Baptist or Catholic for me. Plain and simple. But nowadays, y'all have options. They have so many different things. Crystals and worshiping this and, 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 and yo, I, I mean, ah. They have made so many gods. This generation has made so many gods, but you know something? We did too. But we called ours a house, a car, a promotion. Do you get what I'm saying? That's why I know this word is still Jesus. Just like he has to rebuild us, he's going to have to rebuild our children. Now hear me. Some of us, our kids, they will stay the course. They won't veer. But most of, most of them are. Right, Mother Carolyn? You, you got how many boys? And I guarantee you, you've seen at least four out of the five go, go left, all five of them. <laughs> at least four out of five. You had, you had one that stayed safe. Amen. But, but do you get my point? That it, it's that everything is wonderful. Sometimes you need to share with your child how, baby, I don't know, baby, baby, let me sit down and talk to y'all. I don't know how the mortgage is gonna get paid, but we're gonna have to pray and believe. Let them see. Let them see God. Let them see your God. Is that not how it worked with David? David saw your God. Show them your God. Show them your God. I got so upset with my daughter. How you going to be in my house and not want my God? I had an attitude about I, I had an attitude. God has been too good. And then you want to reject him? He's not going to show up my blessings. Get out. I'm, I'm joking about that. Now, if something brings a curse in your house, so you, you better get, you got to get right or get gone. Come on, I'm just going to be honest with you. Jesus. Amen. I'm going to cut it off right there. Just play something soft. But I, I want to say to the parents, no matter where your child is, no matter how old your child is, because sometimes as parents we look at it and we say, you old enough, you should know better. There are old fools. Just pray that they get it before it's too late. I told you, I, I, I look around and I, and I see three different levels of, of, of people. I, I, I see normal people where the light bulb goes off in your 20s and 30s. That's when you grow up. Something clicks in you and it's, it's, it's time to get it. And then you have the, the uh, I don't want to say a slow learner, the late bloomer. That's between your 30s and 40s. It take you a while. You, 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 you've gone through college and partying, and now you're in your 30s. You finally grow up. And then you have the old fool. That's over 40, trying to sag, throw back jersey, trying to wear skinny jeans and, and, and run with the young cats. Your kid may not have it now. He may be the normal between the 20s and 30s. He may be a late bloomer, 30 to 40. Just pray he's not an old fool. Pray that they don't waste too much time. But as, as long as you put a foundation, you've done your job. Because here's the thing, my brother. Sometimes we as parents will beat ourselves up and we'll say, I messed up. Can you imagine if God blamed himself every time one of us sinned? God would commit spiritual suicide just from me. Don't give up. God is rebuilding. And I promise you, I promise you this message was for you. faith 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You're hoping they come back. Keep your faith intact because you're going to see the evidence. You're going to see the evidence. And that's God's, that's God's word. Just stand on your feet, people of God. Let's just bless his name for, for the service today. God surely showed up in this place. Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that we love you, Jesus. Go ahead, help me out. Come on, let's just give him a give him a sweet melody before we leave. Yes, God. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. We worship you on today in spirit and in truth, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you. Not just for an opportunity to worship, but to worship in your presence today. Thank you for stopping by to see us. Now, Father God, as we get ready to leave this place, we thank you for your word of rebuilding. Thank you, Father, that you did not leave our children out. Thank you, Father, that you loved us enough that you have given us an inheritance to leave unto our children. It may not be money. It may not be houses. It may not be cars. But we will leave a foundation of your word for, you, for our children. Thank you, Father. Thank you for loving us the way you do. And we bless your holy name. We glorify you. And Father, we seal our praise with a hallelujah on today. Hallelujah to your name, Father. Glory. Thank you in Jesus' name.